So now let me show you, you know, generically the transformed area method. And basically, if we have the singly reinforced section, you know, I've already done this A equivalent. This area here of the steel is NAS. I just take this area of steel, multiply it by the modular ratio, and I've got the area of steel down here. I've redrawn the cross section, and now what I want to do is apply the first moment of area to actually come up with a formulation to determine CNA, where I know, you know, B, D, NAS, okay? And so to do that, I got the first thing I got to do for this is choose a reference. And I'm going to choose this right here this top line as my reference and let me bring this down with me and I've chosen my reference so here it is and now I'm gonna apply the first moment of area which is you know something you've applied to calculate the centroid for you know all the days of your life essentially since since statics and mechanics of material so this is just this kinda of like you probably use this y bar is sum of AI times yi over the total area sum of ai. So in this case here, I have just two areas. I have this top area of concrete and this bottom lower area of concrete. So the way I would do this is essentially CNA is the same thing as y bar. So CNA is equal to the sum of area of one times the distance from the reference to the center of area one, which would be CNA over two. And that is just the area of area 1, which is B times CNA, times the arm, which is CNA over 2, plus the area of area 2 over here, or element 2, which is NAS, times the distance from the reference to the centroid of area 2, times D. And I'll put the areas in parentheses just to make sure that we distinguish them. Divided by the total area of this cross section, which is merely B times CNA plus NAS. And when I rearrange this, I will have, and if I rearrange this one more time, I'll end up with this quadratic equation where CNA is my only unknown. And then you can solve for CNA, you know, using the quadratic formula or whatever fancy smancy calculator you got, right? Now, this is the transformed area method. It is the same as using section equilibrium on the stress profile. So you know that here, this is a stress block, this triangle profile triangle section is it extends over this width B so essentially doing the transformed area method is the same as applying section equilibrium so this stress block here has a resultant which I will call C and the stress in my steel has a resultant which I will call T for tension and in fact let me be more specific I'll call this TS for force of steel and I will call the compression CC for the force in concrete. Let me take this down with me. So here are my strain and stress profiles. And now by force equilibrium, I'm going to say that sum of the forces in the horizontal is equal to zero. And what that tells me is that TS is equal to C sub C. And the force in the steel is merely stress times area. So I would just say FS times AS is equal to the volume of this para or triangeloid, if you will, because you know and I know that this really extends out and is applied the entire section it's this triangleoid if that looks like it whoa I'm like an artist almost right so here this CC this force resultant is the volume of this triangleoid uh, and here that it would just be one half times the base which I will call here I'll call that CNA this width right here was F comp times the distance is extruded, which here, this distance would have been B. And so now I have this equation in terms of stresses. And then I can even substitute once again based on Hooke's law. I can go back to strains. And I can say, oh, but this was ES times epsilon S times AS is equal to 1 half uh, EC times epsilon compression times B times C and A. And what I have is one equation and three unknowns. I have this epsilon S, epsilon compression, and C and A. And I, what I want to know is, is there a way I can relate these strains 
to my depth of neutral axis and I can do that by looking at my strain profile and if you can tell from the strain profile just by using basically similar triangle I can see that this distance right here is D minus CNA and from basic trig or similar triangles or whatever you want to use this epsilon s over d minus cna is equal to epsilon comp or epsilon the compressive strain divided by cna and i, I you know i can go ahead and substitute for the strain in, in steel and so that i would for here for the strain in steel i would just put es times as and for that strain in steel i'm going to put d minus cna over cna times the strain in compression is equal to one half EC times epsilon compression times B times C and A. Wow, what do you know? I have these strains and compression canceling out. And again, I'm left with one equation and one unknown. And this equation is the same as that, that we had up here. And the way I can show that to you is uh, I need a modular ratio. So if I divide both sides by EC, this term right here is my modular ratio on this AS and if I multiply both sides by CNA this becomes CNA squared what I'm left with is and it, you know if I can work this out I can rearrange this and this would be and again one equation one unknown and the reason that doing this using force equilibrium is important is because later on when we design and analyze for the ultimate condition of reinforced concrete sections you know the the we can't use the transformed area method because the the materials that make up our reinforced concrete have gone to their nonlinear regions and the only way that we can determine the neutral axis location is by using force equilibrium and essentially you're we're doing that all the time we're doing force equilibrium all the time to locate the neutral axis depth so I hope this video was informative and helpful. We could do some other video examples with uh, with some numbers, right? Make everyone feel better. All right, take it easy. See ya.